Kennedy. Poe established his power to make the fight short. And in the year of Batman's comeback, Poe made Kennedy the Joker. Earl Lewis fared no better against the caped invader. Poe showed him the canvas immediately, and it was an omen. Lewis met his demise in round two, as Poe continued marching through his foes. This Batman has found no villain. So there's a look at Riddick Bowe, and here's a look at the other half of this matchup, Art Card, and you have to consider this a pretty tough task. Yes, he's coming in here against a highly heralded opponent, and he comes in here with, he works a full-time job, Bo gets all the attention, and really can just concentrate on boxing. But there's opportunity here for Card, as many fighters like to come in with that underdog expectation. That's exactly what he figures. He figures, this is my chance. This is going to really either catapult me, or if nothing else, it's not going to hurt me. Well, it, a lot of times, if you can be ready, it shortcuts a lot of years of hard work if you can get that win. All right, let's meet these two officially now. Let's get up to the center of the ring and the ring announcer, America's Michael Buck. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. And welcome to the home of the National Hockey League Sabres, the home of the National Football League Bills, Buffalo, New York. Welcome here to the University of Buffalo Alumni Arena, where tonight, Top Rank Incorporated and the King of Beers Budweiser present professional boxing for your entertainment. These bouts are presented in association with Buffalo Sports Promotions. They're sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, Randy Gordon, Chairman, Assistant to the Chairman, Richard S. Herring, Deputy Commissioner, former welterweight champion of the world, Billy Backus. The three judges at ringside are Don Ackerman, Ruben Garcia, and Don Nodeker. Positions at ringside, Dr. Evan Evans, Dr. Andy Rizzo, and Dr. Mel King. Inspectors at ringside, Tony Petarelli and Bob Rosetta. The timekeeper is Bob Olson, and the referees working on an alternating basis with the alternate counting for the knockdown seconds are Jim Santa and Frank Adams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get things started with six rounds in the heavyweight division. The referee for this bout is Jim Santa. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the black trunks and weighs an even 210 pounds. From Cleveland, Ohio, an excellent professional record of seven victories, four by KO, only one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, Art Carr. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with white trim. He weighed in at 232 and one half pounds from Brooklyn, New York. He's undefeated as a professional with a record of 11 and 0, 10 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a silver medal winner in the super heavyweight division from the 1988 Olympics, presenting Riddick Buffalo Bill Bowles. I hope when he fights from Louisiana, they don't call him Louise. <laughs> New York State Boxing Association. You're here to obey those rules. Listen to my commands and we'll have a good fight. Cut close. There's a look at Art Card. He's, as we mentioned, he figures this is my chance. He has a full-time job. We'll talk more about that. Dave Von Tempo already mentioned it. Meanwhile, Riddick Bowe. Confidence this man does not want for. And when you look at the matchup of the fighters, first the size when they come together. Take a look at that reach that Riddick Bowe has. He's big at 6'6", 232 pounds. And he really does seem to be improving, working nicely behind a jab. And this is probably the most dangerous part of the fight for an He might be his most dangerous very early. As they back up and Carr doing some of his best work here, pinning Bo against the ropes. Bo has been looking to work on some tricks. Double jabbing, going to the body a few times. Good uppercut by Riddick Bowe. Art Card, as we've said, works from 2 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock in the morning at the post office in Cleveland. Then he goes to sleep for four or five hours. Then he goes to the gym. Boy, is that a difficult task. Get up and get your coffee and then spar. And he doesn't have the typical post office job. He goes to the post offices and delivers the mail that's already been where he is. So it's a totally, not only a, a tough schedule, but it's mixed up as far as day and night is concerned. 
Nice uppercut again by Bo inside. And he's coming at card like he senses a weakness derived from that uppercut. Riddick Bowe's people, of course, have made the obligatory challenge to Tommy Morrison and to Ray Mercer. They say, we'll fight you right now. Money is of no importance. And he says, of course, no interest from either party. It's nice to make a challenge, too, when you know they're not going to accept, regardless of whatever happens. Uh, Mercer is being brought along at his pace, Morrison at his. And they're not designed ever to meet until there's some money on the line. I think basically, too, all the conversation is centered around Morrison and Mercer. And off their last performance, all of a sudden, Riddick Bow is going to start to emerge. That's what happens the first time a, a fighter looks a little bit vulnerable when he goes in there. But I think it's something that will work out to their benefit in the long run. There's nothing wrong with tough fights early in one's career. Uh, Bo has not had those. Got people out of there in a hurry. He wants to fight three more times, he says, before the end of 1989. That would make 15 fights in nine months. A, a Tyson-like pace. A little short with that right hand. Didn't miss by much. Art Card is taking some shots, but he's trying to do what he needs to, and that's get inside. And he is trying to smother him, and he does get there with a couple of shots, and Card, clearly the crowd favorite here. We'll be back. Blueprint, get in close and land the uppercut if you can. Started to have some success with that at the end of the first round. And in Riddick Bowe's corner, boy, talk about a brain trust. He's got Eddie Futch, who has been around boxing, I think, longer than dirt. He's seen all the good, bad, and the dirt of boxing. What a wonderful guy. And what a boxing mind he is. Several world champions, including Michael Spink, Larry Holmes. Oh, well, he's a pretty good expert on heavyweights. And your card in the first round, given to Bo. Primarily for his early work. You know, we should talk before we get too far into this evening about the scoring system in New York. It's going to vary a little bit from your own, I think. In New York, what I just scored 10-9 might be more variably called a 10-8 because they want to, for a good boxing round, score 10-8. And use 10-9 only if it's a very tight round. Other parts of the country, of course, 10-8 is only if there's a knockdown or a really lopsided round. But not here. In fact, here they say it's very likely that we could even see a 10-7 round. I like the system. It brings the judges into it a little bit more and rewards the boxer. They tried to do that in New Jersey. It just didn't catch on. Right hand by Bo. And he's starting to fight like he doesn't want the judges to enter into it at all. That chopping right hand will be there for him if he doesn't let Card smother him. Just one final note on the scoring system. On our card here, on Dave Bontempo's card, he will score it the way we scored everywhere else in the country. So there may be a little difference. Here's a big left hand by Bo. The counter left. And our card took it and kept coming. That's a good sign for him. This is the most durable opponent that Bo has had in quite a while. Yeah, I was going to say one thing about Art Card is he does look like he's come in here in reasonably good shape. Bo came off a one-round knockout victory, and there you see his percentage. And before that, a four-round knockout over that Daring Lane, who he'd gotten a decision over before. Just got a right hand in in close. Actually, Card is doing some reasonably good work in close, and it almost seems like Bo is really fighting Card's fight. He's backing up and he's allowing Card to get those uppercuts in, which Card has to have. The shorter fighter, there's no way he can do anything unless he's at this distance. Bo is trying to work in there as he uses the chopping right and goes to the body a little bit. It would be interesting to hear what Eddie Fush has to say to Riddick Bowe between these rounds, and we are going to be able to do that. Nice combination there by Bowe, but he took a left hand from Card, comes back with a left hand of his own, and now Card backs up and is in trouble. Never 
did hear the bell there. Card does his best work here, throwing the left hook and pressuring Bo. This is where he threw the uppercuts earlier in the round. At the end of the round, Bo got his in a nice uppercut, and then his card comes out on the left hook and the right, which if given more time, he might have put Card away. So now let's see if Riddick Bo goes to school on what Papa Smurf, as he calls Eddie Futch, told him. What he wanted him to do was raise Card up by going to the body more and using the uppercut so that Card becomes a bigger target. Card is consciously crouching, and there he goes. A left hand set it up, and a right hand put him down. The continuation that was there at the end of round two, Bo ran out of time. Card is in big trouble now. His legs are gone now. A long way to go in the round. Nice uppercut. That is exactly what Eddie Futch said. You heard it. Now you see that Hart is a bigger target. He's standing higher, and a chopping right hand thrown down at him now can land. And some good body work by Bo as well. In the first couple rounds, Bo was going over the top with that right hand, but if Hart stands up, he's a bigger target. He'll get hit. Two uppercuts again. And there's a hard body shot that Hart is going to feel tomorrow. That's what they want to get Bo away from. The chopping right missed over the top. I also he, thought what Eddie Futch said about throwing his jab at, at the man's chest rather than at his head was an interesting strategy. He wants Card reacting to that jab. And doing anything to lift himself up to get into the path of a right hand. Card has to crouch low and come in there like a little fireball, which he did before he got hit. lost a lot of steam here. And the reason he's up, aside from the fact that he's crowded Bo, Bo has abandoned his jab in this fight. It really has not been a prominent weapon. I think that's one reason he hasn't had his right hand naked. Short left hand, hurt card again. He's ready to go once more. It won't take much more. Bo should have followed up there. Uppercut and left hand behind it. Two jabs there. When he works behind the jab, you can see how effective he is. Card holding on. This could be a standing eight. And it's just a warning. A grab it. Uh, you see the tired arms of Card there as he leaned in and just tried to grab both. Nice uppercut, the left hand behind that. And another. Bo really working the uppercut, working the body very well in this round. Oh, a moral victory for Card. He may get through this round. Second warning to Card for holding. Good body shot again by Bo. Bo doing everything right in this round. Except perhaps not utilizing the jab quite as much as he should. Card heading for a neutral corner. So. He looked like he didn't want to come out for the fourth round anyway. There's a guy that's taken his best chance already and has not come up big. And if I were in his corner, Barry, I wouldn't let him come out for the fourth. Yeah, I agree. It's really a lost cause. He looks, you can see it, he looks like a tired and hurt fighter. And the left hook, crisp by Riddick Bowe, but Bowe has to reload here. They're going to look at tapes of that fight. There's the right hand knockdown which he had a lot of time. The uppercut really coming into play. A nice two-punch shot. And they have, right. they have stopped the fight. And I believe it was, as you surmised, the corner of Art 
Card who just said, no, we're not going to do this, and I think it's the right thing. He took a nice try in this fight in the second round, got close to Riddick Bowe, and punched well, landed some uppercuts, and had Bowe thinking about some consequences here, but in the third round, it was all over. Again, Riddick Bowe, to me at least, I've seen him fight four or five times now, seems to be taking a little step forward every time he fights. He shows you a little more, and tonight, this is probably the most prominent his uppercut has been. And that's a good sign because this is the opponent to use it again. Somebody smaller, somebody who really was trying to cover up and stay out of the way of Bo's jam. He also followed the advice of his corner, and oftentimes you won't see a young fighter do that. A guy who's used to winning, this guy's never lost as a professional, didn't lose that much as an amateur, but he really is listening, and you can tell it's paying off for him. Well, you sense he's got a burning desire to improve. He adjusted from what was said, and he worked on different things. The body shots and the uppercut. Let's get the official word from Michael Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jim Santa acting on the advice of the position at ringside stops the bout at the end of the third round. The winner by TKO. His record now goes to 12 and 0 with 11 KOs. Riddick Buffalo Bill Bowe. So Buffalo Bill rides off into the sunset with another W. He wants three more fights, he says, before the end of the year. He says he'd like to be 15 and 0 for tonight. He's 12 and 0 and winning. Dave Bontempo is with the winner of the last fight, Riddick Boat. Dave, you got it. Okay, Barry Riddick, you, you, you worked pretty hard for this one tonight. Is that a gratifying thing for you here? Yes, and also knowing that uh, this guy here was a diehard, I hit him with some tremendous shots, and he just kept coming. He wouldn't stop. But uh, at the end, he submitted, and I am king. <laughs> <laughs> the king in the second round, you seem to have some difficulty. He made himself a smaller target and did his best work against you inside. Well, he did. He takes a hell of a punch, but uh, again, you know, uh, I went back to the corner and Papa Smurf here told me to stop uh, throwing him down and start bringing him up, and uh, it paid off. Let's take a look at what you did there in the third round. When you did bring him up, take us through it and what's going through your mind here. Well, right here, I'm trying to set him up for the hook. As you can see, that's all I kept throwing was the uppercut hook because he told me that would, you know, set him up for the big right hand, and it worked. Did you? Uh, let's take another look later in the round here as you keep coming on. Um, again, I'm trying to throw the, the uppercut hook. And as you can see, it, it hurts him a lot. And uh, again, he, he takes a better punch than I anticipated. This seemed to be the most prominent your uppercut has been in a while, maybe because of the kind of fighter you were up against. Well, again, he was shorter, so um, I had to throw punches uh, up instead of down. Again, because once I threw him down, he was getting away from me. Okay, let's get a quick assessment from Eddie Futch, his trainer. What did you think tonight, Eddie? Well, I think this is the kind of fight that I want to see Bo in. Somebody who's going to give him uh, a stern test in there. Because uh, this is the uh, the way that the uh, uh, young fighter like Bo learns, and uh, and learning while winning is is the way that I want to see him uh, advance. What kind of styles do you still want to see him against? Well, uh, I want to see him.